Let us once again look at the window, this time without a prism. But instead, just fix your gaze on it. Try not to move the eyes. Just look steadily and wait. When the picture suddenly disappears, you see instead a white cross and black window panes. The negative of the original. And that image is produced by your eyes. The so-called after image bears witness of an inner activity, a creative response of the eye. The same observation can be made with chromatic colors. Let me show you an example of this. Fix the center of this picture and wait. What do you see? when it disappears after seven seconds. You saw this, didn't you? Each color has its complementary color that answers to it. And this seems to be the same pairwise relationship as the one found in the prismatic experiments that is, red corresponds to turquoise, green to purple, and blue-violet to yellow. Here you have another testimony of the activity of the eye, so-called simultaneous contrast. Grey is a mysterious color. It is the color of shadows, both light and dark at the same time. Would you say that these two squares are the same shade of grey? In other words, are they identical? Let us find out by letting them meet and unite into one rectangular shape. Well, they didn't look alike, but it turns out that they were identical. Grey easily takes on opposite roles. In a bright context, it represents darkness. In a dark context, it represents light. Here the two grey squares on colored backgrounds not only differ in lightness but also in hue. If you think about it, you see that the tendency is a shift away from the hue of the surrounding area. Here is another example. The effect is strongest when the lightness of square and surround is almost the same, enhancing the contrast. Goethe sums up his observations as a general principle. The eye creates freedom for itself by producing the opposite of that which is forced upon it, creating in this way a satisfying whole. Now we turn to a still more puzzling phenomenon. I have here an ordinary white paper. I fold it carefully, then unfold it. I put it on the table. What do I see when looking carefully at the border between the two halves of the paper? Let us focus on the border somewhere in the middle. You have a very faint shadowing on the sides of the border. To the left it is blue, to the right slightly yellow, not just white. This has to do with the non-uniformity of illumination in the room. Shadows are not simply grey. They may very well show one or other hue. The blue shadows on snow is a well-known example. This can be used, for instance, on the stage where objects are illuminated by spotlights with various color filters. The conditions for colored shadows are as follows. In this case you have a fully symmetrical arrangement with two candles as light sources. You get two shadows, B and C. Place a color filter D, say a purple-red one, in front of one of the candles. Shadow C gets the color of the filter, i.e. red. At the same time, shadow B, illuminated by the other candle, E, 
also changes its color from gray to the opposite color of that of C, namely green in this particular case. So the red filter seems to carry with it the possibility of giving rise to both red and green. Colors belong together in pairs, as we saw already in connection with the prismatic demonstrations. Again, Goethe summarizes, stating a general principle he sees in all this. Color itself is shade. And just as it has an affinity with shadow, so too will it merge with it as soon as the right conditions are given.